evening and welcome to the Overtime. I'm Brooke Cowell. And I'm Tressa Tedrick. Thanks for joining us. We've got a lot going on with the Coconino and Flagstaff baseball rivalry game, even some Flagstaff and softball. And we're going to try to figure out what is going on with the Arizona Diamondbacks. <laughs> we also have an exclusive interview with NEU head coach Jerome Sowers. And we'll keep you updated on the weekend sports events. All right. But you want to get right into it? Yeah, let's go ahead and start right, things let's off. Let's go. For the first question, it's rivalry, rivalry week, like you said. Who do you have, Coco or Flag Baseball? Tress? Okay, I'll start this one off. <laughs> I love high school baseball, and I've been out to quite a few games this season, but I'm going to have to side with the Coconino Panthers. The Panthers have nine seniors leading the way, including Diego Johnson, Fritz Plekas, and of course the Chapin brothers, to name a few. I think seniority says a lot about the team. The Panthers have won nine of their last ten games, and this gives credit to the offense. The team is hitting a 403 batting average, and the Panthers have a 485 on base percentage. Considering the defense, the team's ERA is 332. Pitcher Diego Johnson has an ERA under four and has four wins under his belt. This game is going to be the close one. The Panthers have a 19 and 6 record. Flagstaff is 19 and 5. You know, I really can't wait to see what happens this game. Yeah, you know, I agree. Coconino has had a great season so far, and their bats have been on fire, especially as of lately. But I'm going to go with Flagstaff on this one. Their records are almost identical, like you said, with the Panthers having a 19 and 6 record and the Eagles with the 19 and 5 record. But this game draws a lot of attention and has a lot on the line. The Eagles are on a four game win streak right now, and I think with that momentum, it will get the Eagles this one up that they need. Yes, the Chapin brothers will be, a t will be tough to beat, but it comes down to the team overall. And I think that just about every player can put up runs for Flagstaff. So I think that the big game hype will bring Flag the win. But overall, it's going to be a great game. We'll like have said. to see. I think Coco's <laughs> going to put up a fight as well. No, yeah, it's going to be a good game. I think so. <laughs> but all righty, on to the second question. Moving over to the girls' side. Who do you have winning the rivalry for softball? Brooke, I know you played softball, so <laughs> why don't you start this off? Well, just like the boys, the girls are doing well, too, both mm -hmm. teams. Only this game has a lot more on the line than bragging rights. This game determines a playoff run. And, you know, I'm going to hop on the Flagstaff train for this one as well. Not only are they undefeated in their section, but they're also ranked 39th in the Arizona State rankings. It was a close game last time these two played, and I think we should expect another great game. But I think the, Eagle, the Eagles have the one up. Their bats have been on fire, and, I mean, that game against Dysart, 20 to nothing, just shows their bats tell it all. And with the rivalry game being the last game of the season, I think the Eagles are pulling out everything they have for this one. I think so. I mean, when you got a rivalry game, there's a lot on the line to lose. But I do give credit to the Flagstaff Eagles, but the Coconino Panthers are undefeated in their section as well. So this game is going to be huge. The Lady Panthers have an extra conference win under their belt. The team's batting average is 339, but once they're on base, they aren't afraid to steal one here and there. They have 63 stolen bases to be exact. The Panthers are on a four-game winning streak as of Wednesday, and earlier this month, they shut out Monument Valley 22 to 0. They know how to make their bats sing and pitcher Riley Hanneman is the ace with nine wins and a 4.15 ERA. Like you said, this game is going to be close and have everyone cheering from both sides. I think best of luck to both teams. And I know I will be there too. So Me too. If, you, if you go, I'll see you out there. <laughs> exactly. But all right, moving on up to the third question. What are your NEU volleyball season predictions? Okay, I'll start this off. It is a little early to call the shots on the Lady Jack season, but I'm expecting nothing less than another appearance in the Big Sky Tourney. I think after only losing two seniors, the Jacks can only get better from here on out. They had a good showing in the brief spring season against the state rival Sun Devils, and they performed well in the Albuquerque in four matches. Soon to be senior Cindy Kemper and junior Janae Vanderplug, and now sophomore Addie Lofstead on the net. Taylor Stevens as the middle back and Triana Henry as the libero. This combination works and it worked all last season under coach Ken Murphy's first year. I think his contributions to maintaining the integrity of the program show and these girls got a lot of drive and talent to take it really far. You know it is early to tell but from what I have seen from the Jacks so far this spring I am liking what I see. I think the Jacks are going to do well this season. They only lost two seniors and that's uh, um, so the players have been playing well together for a while. They beat ASU and had a good run in Albuquerque when they faced New Mexico, Adams State, and West Texas A&M. So they are looking like they will have a bright season. 
and with the younger team, but with experienced players who know how to play with each other, they will definitely make playoffs. I think so. I mean, with a lot of juniors on the team, I think there's room to grow, and there's a lot of improvement from last season. Yeah, and they know each other. Exactly. So they kind of play. <laughs> they know what's going on. But, okay, on to question number four. April for the Diamondbacks was just about as bad as it can be. Do you think May will be a better month? Brooke, I'm, you could go ahead and start this one out. <laughs> well, I do love my baseball, but I'm not loving the Diamondbacks no. and how they've been playing this April. And the thing is, I don't even know what they can do to get better. Trades are going to be the talk of this season, and we need pitching. Goldschmidt is doing his job hitting above 300, and Trumbo, he's been hitting the ball when he's needed, but now he's hurt. So I don't know what the D-backs options are other than to start trading and rebuilding. Because with the way they're playing now, it looks like it's going to be a pretty rough I think <laughs> a rough statement. <laughs> a rough season is an understatement, but I agree, Book. The season does look grim for the Diamondbacks, who are digging themselves into a deep hole with the worst record in the major leagues. Offensively, the D backs, you know, they're doing okay. Mark Trumbull leaves with seven home runs and 19 RBIs, but that doesn't matter because he's out. Paul Goldschmidt is hitting 333, but everyone else on the rotation is hitting below 300. We know hitting could be better, but pitching needs to be better. Wade Miley leads with a pair of wins, but his ERA is 450. A 450 for your leading pitcher won't win you games. The team's pitching is hurting without Patrick Corbin. If things don't start changing soon, this could be a very long season for Arizona. Yeah, uh, trades. That's about all I can say. Yeah, we just got to see things <laughs> going. I mean, can we throw the question about Kurt Gibson and how long he's going to stay? <laughs> I, I don't even know. <laughs> it's just rough. All, All right. <laughs> just 30 seconds for this one. Last one. What is your biggest shocks for you so far in the NHL with playoffs? You know, they've just started, and already I am disappointed in the Kings. They did not have a good series against the Sharks. It was pretty much a cakewalk for them. Quick was not as quick as it usually is, and that really affected them. Yeah, I agree, Brooke. Where I'm both from, we're both from California, and I've already heard an earful from my dad about the Kings' performance. <laughs> they really needed that overtime win against San Jose, but hopefully they can turn things around in the next couple of games and then keep the, you know, NHL playoffs exciting. Yeah. Uh, ducks are good, though. Yeah, I the mean, ducks are doing good I'm for us in California. Area. Exactly. So we're good. But <laughs> my dad's not happy about the Kings. <laughs> but all righty, stick around. Sports reporter Alex Lucero sat down with head football coach Drum Sowers to talk about the blue and gold game tomorrow. My new dad teaches me all kinds of stuff. Hmm. Sure. He helps me with homework. That would be 3.6795. Thanks. Yep. He helps me with my decision making. I wouldn't use this one. Ever. And he's even teaching me how to drive. And that's why cars have bumpers. I'm learning so much. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. Thousands of kids in foster care will take you just as you are. Welcome back. Well, football season can never start too early, as the NEU football team is getting ready for another successful season, starting with their spring game tomorrow. Sports reporter Alex Lucero sat down with coach Jerome Sowers to talk about the team's progression. Thanks, guys. Well, Lumberjack football had one of their better performances in recent history, posting a 9-2 regular season record and going to the playoffs for the first time in 10 years. Today, I'm joined with the head football coach, Jerome Sowers. How are you doing, coach? Doing great. Thank you. All right. So the first thing I want to ask you about is last season, just assess the overall performance of the team. You know, we had a great off season, and uh, we felt like we had a pretty good team and had a chance to make a run at the championship. And and it was fun to see the guys compete and uh, you know, win some tough games and a lot of achievement. Next thing is the starters that you're losing. You've lost eight defensive starters from that team a year ago. Who are you really looking for to, to step up and really fill in those kind of positions? Well, we lost a lot of guys in the secondary for starters and, and you know, guys like Rob Watson have to step up and we've had solid play by some of our transfers that have, that have we brought into the program and we're going to bring some high school guys in as well and the uh, you know the overall play of our secondary has been solid in spring so far so uh, i think we're going to be pretty good 
and some of those high school players may have to step up in, the, in, in that defensive scheme, and you signed 28 of them. Who's really are, are you looking for to become an impact player right away for your team? Well, we try to enter camp with all of our freshmen, you know, to projecting to play. And what we do in the camp is we get everybody in, integrated into the system, and it actually begins earlier in our summer workout program. And the guys are a little more mature and a little more physically ready. We'll uh, attempt to challenge the depth chart, and if they're able to beat out a starter or become a quality backup, then they're going to play right away. And, and I'd say seven or eight of those guys fall into that category. Is there anyone in mind that comes to you right away that, that can really uh, help you guys right away? Well, I think uh, uh, Cole Stern is a great player from, you know, uh, from Tucson, and, and we expect uh, you know, a number of guys uh, like that to, to contribute. Uh, uh, I know, uh, uh, you know there's a lot of new faces on defense right now, and they're, they're trying to battle for position, and, and that's just going to continue in August. And let's talk a little bit about quarterback situation. Last year, there was a lot of shifting between Kyron Poe and Chase Cartwright. Cartwright, he's now a senior, but when I went to your, one of your guys' practices, uh, Kyron was taking first team reps. Who's going to be the starter this year? Uh, Kyron Poe right now is our starting quarterback, and it's nice that we have experience like Chase Cartwright, who has you know played and, and is uh, battle worthy. And uh, but right now, Kyron Poe is our starter. Okay, and is, is that set in stone, or is, is there still a uh, competition? Well, I think you always have, com you want competitive tension in every one of your positions. You know, if, uh, if everybody's challenged, all the starters are challenged, and they're going to play better and usually practice harder, and, and uh, you know, ultimately the best player will play the game. And, and uh, right now that's Kyron Poe. And you guys, is any of you blue and gold spring football game is tomorrow. What are you really looking for out of this team uh, heading into next season? Well, in a scrimmage, when you're you know competing against yourself, uh, somebody's going to feel good and somebody's not. And uh, what I'd like to see is is the kind of competi competition we've seen all spring long, where uh, offenses look good, defenses look good, and and tomorrow I I'd hope that both sides have their share of plays. All right. Well, thank you, Coach, and we'll be sure to be looking out for you guys next season, uh, starting out your season against San Diego State. And I'm going to send it back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Al. Thanks, Alex, and thank you, Coach Stars, for keep keeping us updated on everything NAU football. Get out to the spring game tomorrow if you can. Well, stick around. Sports reporter Kaylee Emery has all the weekend sports updates coming up. I was an ordinary guy, but I switched to Suddenlink's new internet, and now I can't stop being awesome because it's the fastest in town. Downloads, uploads, any kind of load, everything just flows at speeds 13 times faster than phone company DSL. Even when the whole family is online, there's no buffering. With DSL, we were suffering. Yep, anything the phone company can do, I can do faster. Now that I have the next big thing from Suddenly. Now that I have a house full of easy. You sure you don't want some? It's chamomile. Listen, you are extremely terrifying. Just the scariest undead subhuman thing on TV and I really mean that. <laughs> but I am worried that you could give my kids nightmares if they see you, so I'm gonna have to block you. <laughs> so that's it. Oh, and, and tell the zombies they're, they're blocked too. Welcome back everyone. It's going to be a cold and busy weekend here in Flagstaff. We'll start things out at the track as the Flagstaff girls and boys track and field teams will be down in the valley for the Glendale Invitational as the girls meet is at 11 a.m. at Alhambra High School and the boys is at 9 p.m. at Glendale Community College. All of this will be on Saturday. And over at Coconino High, their track and field teams will be busy as well on Saturday. At 9.30, the boys and girls will meet at North Canyon High School for the Rattler Underclassmen Invite. And then following the Rattler event, they will join the Flagstaff teams for the Glendale Invitational at 11 and 9. Staying on the track, the NPA boys and girls track and field team will be a part of the Knights of Columbus Invitational at Borgade High School Saturday at noon. Moving up to the NAU level, both of the men's and women's tennis teams will be taking part of the Big Sky Championships on Saturday and Sunday. The, lo the location for these teams and games are still undetermined. And then on Saturday, the NAU football team will have their spring football game at Lumberjack Stadium at 2 o'clock. So with all these events on Saturday, it should be the perfect time to check out the teams if you're in Flagstaff or down in the Valley. So I'm going to send it back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, well, Kaylee. Thank you, Kaylee. You're going to be at the game on Saturday? Of course. I wouldn't miss it for the world, would you? It's going to be a great one. I think so. I mean, technically, we're going to have to, I guess, start things off. Um, thank you for joining us, and have a wonderful evening. <laughs>